Poppy Playtime's new and nightmare critters have all been revealed with eight new characters in total and today I'm going to talk about every single one of them to answer what are these characters, why do they exist, and most importantly what will their place be in the upcoming chapter 4. Well first let's go over and cover all of the eight characters in case you missed them because there are a lot, starting with Baba Chops who is described as the black sheep of the bunch. Baba prefers to keep her space, she can be distant, quiet, low energy, and it usually requires a lot of coaxing to get her out of the house. She usually perks up after a while, but the next day we're right back to the same tune, labeling the sheep as an introverted and generally antisocial critter. The next character, Icky Licky, who I'm never getting used to saying, is a poisonous frog with very similar negative traits reading. Icky's the type of kid to fall behind in a relay race and immediately pin it on a sore knee. He's the very definition of a poor sport, even though he's naturally talented, he's constantly challenging everyone on absolutely everything, and usually without the outcome he expects. The next next character, Raby Baby, a pink bat, is described. Raby couldn't keep a secret if her life depended on it. She has no concept of privacy or boundaries, and if she's in the room, you can bet she's eavesdropping on someone. If she ever runs out of juicy secrets to talk about, she'll just make some up. Following behind Raby, there's Alistair Gator, the alligator if you couldn't guess, described. Alistair's an all-around lazy guy. He isn't a fan of the whole put in effort and see that effort rewarded bit. He's much more a believer of the philosophy, good things have to come to me eventually. I just need to wait around for it. Next, there is Simon Smoke, the cool dragon, described. Simon Smoke notes he's cool and popular, and he makes sure nobody ever forgets it. It's always a popularity contest with him. In truth, he's a colossal jerk, but he does have a knack for getting away with being one. Then, there's Poe the Raven, who is apparently named after Edgar Allan Poe, the author of the horror book The Raven. Poe hates the sun and thinks it's a cool trick of nature that the world needs it in the first place. They spend their nights hanging around graveyards and feeling vaguely angry at nothing in particular. They insist it isn't a phase. After them, next on the list is the rat, Tui, who is described. Tui, it's pronounced Tui, thanks for the disclaimer, is a self-proclaimed trash rodent. When he's not busy eating and collecting garbage, he's a lively conversationist. He talks a lot, which is made all the more surprising by him having shockingly little to say. If you ever need someone to provide insightful commentary or some random piece of junk, Tui is your guy. Then, and finally, last but not least, there's Maggie Mako, the shark who is described. Maggie is always thinking about her belly. She's happiest with food in her mouth, and believe us, she's not picky, kind of taking shots at one of these smiling critters. She loves sweets, but veggies, yuck. Don't be surprised if she takes your healthy eating habits advice with a dabble of sugar, some chocolate syrup, whipped cream, and a big cherry on top, all while laughing at you profusely, poetically scented like chocolate. But that gives us every nightmare critter and I don't know, I like them. I know a lot of people were upset with them reusing these Smiling Critters design for Chapter 4, but either way, now this brings us back to our questions. What were these critters and their purpose in the Playtime Co. lore, and how might they show up in Chapter 4? Well, as we pointed out, every single one of the critters has negative, undesirable traits. Baba is overly introverted, Icky's a sore loser, Raby is a gossip girl, Alistair is lazy, Simon is a narcissist, Poe is overly edgy, Tui is a professional yapper, and Maggie Mako is a glutton and eats unhealthy. This is a complete opposite of the original Smiling Critters, who were notably very lovable and had good traits, meant to be role models for the children who were consuming the content, and in fact, a lot of the nightmares are just direct opposites of the Smiling Critters. For instance, Piggy Piggy represents eating healthy and watching what you eat, while Maggie Mako does the opposite, Kickin' Chicken is a likable people person, Simon Smoke is an egotistical jerk, Hoppy Hopscotch is an energetic, enthusiastic friend, Friend, while Alistair is a sloth and lazy, just to name a few. This makes me believe the Nightmare Critters, judged from their similar naming scheme, were likely meant to be the villains of the Smiling Critters directly. Since we saw in the book, they had plans to have a whole Smiling Critters show before it was cancelled due to the Critters line completely failing. But where things get interesting is when you remember why the original Smiling Critters failed in the first place. It was because of the Catnap Nightmare incident, where children who were ordering the Catnap dolls were reporting a mistake mysterious red smoke pouring out of them, the infamous red gas from chapter 3, that was causing the children to turn sluggish and have intense nightmares as a side effect. This caused the catnap critter to get fully removed from the market, but as mentioned in the book, while they tried continuing pushing the rest of the line, this one mistake tarnished all of these smiling critters and made it a complete failure PR-wise, causing them to completely tank. However, these smiling critters were clearly a good idea. The company spent all of their money trying to make it 
a success had it not been for one major controversy and we've even seen in real life how lovable and successful they are to a real audience everybody loves these smiling critters but then this brings me to the nightmare critters which we know had to have been created after the original smiling critters which first debuted in 1989 but of course before the factory closed in 1995 having to have been created at some point between these six years and this timeline conveniently makes total sense because around the late 80s to 90s it was a big trend for toys to be a little bit more edgy than normal think of the garbage pale kids brats dolls the ghostbusters franchise and many more pieces of media and we've seen playtime co being super hip to actual trends over the years like originally making a baby doll in 1950 transitioning to stuffed animals and action figures in the mid to late 90s even mimicking the care bears trend with the original smiling critters that took inspiration from them both of which created in the late 80s so it makes sense that in the 90s they would hop on this wave of the edgier darker toys in the nightmare critters and most importantly going back to the point of the original critters being a complete failure because of the catnap controversy i also wonder if this line was meant to serve as giving playtime co another go at the critters the smiling critters were clouded in all of the drama revolving catnap and they tarnished the entire company's reputation permanently regardless of how good or bad the other toys were but making the nightmare critters as a shift was possibly their chance to wipe away that negative stigma silently drowning the late smiling critters out with a new very similar wave in the nightmare critters that gave them a second chance to capitalize on the idea even in universe we know there was a market for these characters as in the toy store section of the orientation notebook we saw that the older teenage orphans in play care felt that they had outgrown the playtime products and had to be discouraged from making dark interpretations of the characters since as they grew up and became more edgy mature themes naturally were more interesting to them so i believe the nightmare critters were specifically made to cater to this older audience giving something that would not just interest the youth but also occupy the slightly older teenage audience this explains at least possibly why the critters could have been made in theory but then how will these characters appear in chapter 4 gameplay wise well we've seen with literally every other character in the game that there have been bigger bodies possibly multiple bigger bodies of them all huggy kissy mommy these smiling critters every toy has some kind of a bigger body and with there literally being thousands of experiments judged from the experiment numbers i'm basically 100 confident that these nightmare critters will also have bigger bodies of their own but unfortunately i don't know how much of a place they will have in the actual game as when the developers revealed the nightmare critters as i mentioned it was a pretty controversial move since people were kind of getting tired of the same smiling critters formula with chapter three and found it super disappointing the next main villains were just going to be more critter redesigns however to save face the developers came out and basically confirmed to us that these characters were not going to be the main villains and were rather just going to be a side thing to go along with the true chapter four characters now this is good for people who wanted something new but unfortunately them confirming this also sort of inherently confirms that we probably won't be seeing much of the nightmare critters in the main game i mean even with these smiling critters who were the main focus of chapter three we knew there were bigger bodies for all eight of them according to the book lore wise but most of them didn't appear in the game just a small handful of the most important ones so at best considering the nightmare critters are just a side project we might get to see like baba chops or maybe another one of the more popular critters as a bigger body and the rest of the critters will be delegated to something smaller like their plush forms kind of like what they did in the playhouse of chapter three but otherwise i think the goal with this line was to one sell more smiling critters merch but also to be a lore piece in the game to explain how the company was able to move past literally poisoning kids with the original catnap line by covering it up with something fresh a similar naming scheme to help people forget and something to try and hold the company afloat until well 1995 happened but who knows maybe they'll have a bigger purpose i'm sure hoping for it however while we wait to see who the real main villains are check out this video to see me talk about the upcoming chapter 4 arg and other news you might have missed